Come on now, come on. Whoa. I love 
Come on, y'all help me sing it the old time way. tell you, the race is not given Come on, to the oh, swift right. nor to the strong, on, but to he that endureth unto the hey. end. And listen, we talked about it Monday in, in, in our study on the Ephesians. Right. He said, put on the whole armor yes. of God yes. that hey. you might be able to stand. If you've got the armor of God on, then stop crying about it. Stop cussing about it. If you've got the armor of God on, then it said, stand therefore then in the power of his might. Having done all, all he wants to see you doing at the end is standing. You ain't got to be rich. You ain't got to be pretty. You Listen, y'all don't hear what I'm saying today. You ain't got to drive the finest car. Right. But all he wants to see you doing in the end is standing for Jesus. Hey. Listen, if I can't stand, then I'll crawl. If I can't crawl, then I'm going to scoot. If I can't scoot, I'm going to find somebody to carry me. But I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. All the way to the end. Sad sometime. I'm still going to stand. Worried every now and then. I'll still stand. Every now and then. Don't walk out on me. I'm still going to stand. Up. Standing. Down. Standing. In. Standing. Out. Standing. I will. Bless the Lord. At all times, and it's praise. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I feel like preaching already. I feel like preaching already. Hallelujah. You don't know, like I know, what he's done for me. You don't know, 
like I know how he set me free. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to praise him. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody that don't normally praise him. You ought to break out and give him a praise. Somebody that don't normally lift your hand. You ought to lift your hand today. I don't know about you, but I need my blessing. I need my blessing. I need to get my money right. I need to get my body right. I need to get my mind right. Hallelujah. If the person next to you say you're making too much noise, just tell them, excuse me, but I got to praise and I got to get it out. I got a hallelujah down on the inside and I got to get it out. Ain't God all right? I will praise him in the morning. 
praise him all day long. I feel like praise praise him. Hallelujah. Right. Give him a hand clap for all that he's done. Hallelujah. Listen, stand where you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. We want to dedicate this song to a pastor. Second chance. Amen.
let's go over to that Gospel of Luke again. Uh huh. In that second chapter. And uh, I was thinking about young people throughout the week. And uh, this is Youth Sunday. And we want to give something that's appropriate for the young people as well as the parents. Amen. 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 Uh -huh. We're going to go back to that second chapter of Luke and we're going to just read a couple of verses starting at the 44th verse. Amen. Amen. We'll just read 44 and 45. Amen. Amen. Here's what it says in the New King James Version. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey. Amen. They went a day's journey. And sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. They returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Amen. 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 Pray with me. Amen. I just want to preach just for a little while from the topic, no child left behind. Amen. No child left behind. Pray with me, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I ask now that you continue to dwell with us in the form of your precious Holy Spirit. Would you move among us and have thine own way. Father God, I ask right now that you open the hearts and the minds of this waiting congregation. That they might be able to receive the word that you have deposited in my spirit. Father God, right now I ask that you would take me and hide me behind the shadow of the cross. They might not see me, but Christ in me. Bless, Lord, somebody's soul today. Cleanse, Lord, and make them whole. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 No child left behind. Are we losing a whole generation? Does it seem to you that we're losing an entire generation? Is there something that is missing somewhere? Something in our educational system, something in our, our ability today to raise our children uh, that we had before, or at least for the most part, and that we don't have today. Amen? Amen. Uh, we're making them appear as if they're strangers in our own communities many times in our own families and even from our own culture. I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, everybody on my street knew who I was. Amen? If I walked down the street and if I got into something untoward, they not only knew me, but they knew my mama, they knew my daddy, they knew what they did, and many times where they came from and where they worked at, all of those things. And believe me, before I got home, How about that, all right. Somebody, and we didn't even have cell phones back then. How amen? about that? <laughs> somebody would be them told mama yeah. Yeah. what was going on. I remember when we went and played with some matches over there by the by the canal. It's, it's a parking lot now, but that used to be a an old dry field, amen. amen. Right off of Wilkerson Place. And uh, they had some old abandoned houses. And we thought nobody would see us, so we're going to play with some matches out there in the high grass. Nobody can see it in there. Amen. amen. And, and, and the match got a little hot, and I dropped it. <laughs> and I tried to stamp it out, but if you, don't, if you don't know how fast dry grass goes up in flames, it started burning really fast. So there was nobody around and and uh, it was a wasn't a school day or anything like that. And so we snuck around the abandoned buildings, then torn down now. And we all ran to our houses and started watching cartoons. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We thought we got away with it. We heard the sirens and we heard the fire engine. We didn't go back out there and look though, see what was going on. We just kept watching Bugs Bunny. 
And Alma Fudd do their thing. Amen. Amen. But unbeknownst to us, a little old lady <laughs> that always sit by the window, she watched us and she saw us when we were running from the field. How about that? And let me tell you something. All up and down Wilkinson Place, you could hear people screaming. Little kids screaming. In the nights, in the night, in the, in the night, uh, in the night, uh, uh, a breeze over the night breeze, uh, as them straps was coming down. <laughs> Amen. But we had set the field on fire and thought we got away with it. But it seems today that we don't know our young people anymore. We don't know them. They walk up and down the street. We don't know who they are. Uh, they're in our neighborhoods. We don't know who they are. If one of them did something, we wouldn't know one from the other. All we could do is say he had on a black hoodie and a baseball cap and some jeans and he was dark skinned or he was light skinned. That's the only way we'd be able to describe them. Amen? Amen. See, across America, I'm, te I'm telling you, it's the same story. Uh, in the minority community, I'm talking about the poverty stricken community as they call it, mostly hard working people. Amen? We've all watched the generation of our children get left behind by the nation system of public education. See, see, the government's official program is called No Child Left Behind. Y'all know that? Uh, it, it was instituted in 2001 by then President George W. Bush. And it's been praised by some and blamed for the failures of our education system and our children by other folk. Amen? Amen. Now, ideally, if the, if the program worked, it sets high standards and accountability for all of the schools around America. To break it down for you, he instituted a, a policy where all schools had to be accountable for the testing scores Amen. of their students or they would be penalized if they, their students didn't meet the standards, especially in your core courses like math, science, and reading, and writing. Amen? Amen. Now, since the test measured the performance of the students in math, reading, science, amen? Amen. The schools began to teach those subjects very heavily. In other words, they started to teach the test. Y'all right, hear what I'm saying today? I hope, I hope some of y'all will listen to me. They started to teach the test and see, that didn't leave much room for the arts. They took the arts program out of the school. See, that didn't leave much room for music. Uh -huh. You rarely ever see a child walking home with a violin case anymore. Amen. You very rarely see a child walking home with a, a horn case uh, in his hand because, see, teaching the test took precedence over the music program, so they scrapped it. Yeah. Teaching the test took precedence over the smaller sports program, so you might not have the soccer program anymore. Right. Uh, yeah, because he, see, the soccer program doesn't really bring in a lot of money. That's Amen. Right. That's right. The football program and the basketball program does, but that program, we can scrap that. We need more time to teach the test. Amen. 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 For example, nowadays when you go to school, they spend a lot less time teaching writing. You know, what we used to call cursive writing. Right, right. right. Very few young people today even know how to write in what we call cursive writing. Amen? Amen. Uh, when I went to school, we had whole semesters that were dedicated to cursive writing. Y'all ever had those courses? Uh, you had to take the lines and you were graded. and you had, to, you had to draw lines in between the lines and you were graded on how straight your lines were or if your line had the right curvature because that taught you how to move your hand when you wrote cursive letters. Amen? Amen. Now, there's very little teaching on the poems and memorization of the poems. Amen? We used to memorize poems and have and memorize speeches, and somebody would recite Martin Luther King's speech, and somebody would recite poems of 
egg her out in poetry. We got to teach the test. We don't have no time for teaching poetry. We don't have no time uh -huh, for uh -huh. teaching the cultural thing. We don't have any time for sonnets, and we don't have any time for those classical quotations. Who cares about Macbeth? Who cares about Romeo and Juliet? We don't have any time for that. We've only got one more semester, and we've got to make sure that we teach the test. All right. So they abandoned those things that build our culture and just began teaching the test. And you know what happens when somebody is always testing you? That's how we do in churches a lot of times. We, we, we want to test people when they come into our church. We want to test the young people when they come into our church. Are they wearing the right thing? Uh, are they sitting in the right place? Are they standing when they're supposed to stand? Do they know the words to this song, to that song? Are they talking at the right time? We want to test each other, and then we want to test our young people. But you know what? <laughs> when you start testing people all the time, somebody going to start cheating. Y'all don't hear what all I'm right. saying today. Right. Right. See, if you keep testing me, and, and, and if, if, if for me to look good in your eyes, I'm always being tested on this, then listen, I, I'm going to say hallelujah, and I'm going to speak in tongues, and I'm going to do all that because you're testing me. Amen. I'm going to start jumping Talk up and down it, and flipping around because you, you're testing me. You're trying to test me to see if I'm saved. And See, that's what the schools are doing. Amen. Amen. They began cheating on the test, and the teachers have been fired for, for giving students in their class that might be a little below. Uh, slip them the answers. Amen. And then some have been that have been have been uh, 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 have been fined or even been penalized for changing or altering the test. Amen. So, since schools are uh, testing, also uh, the No Child Left Behind also scores uh, schools on their performance as it, as it relates to dropouts. Amen. And suspensions, they all uh, go against the school score. A lot of them started getting creative and, and, and using little tricks, to play on words, and changing their reality a little bit. Amen? Amen? Instead of dropouts, they start calling them remediation candidates. Amen? Amen? Instead of suspensions, they, they call parent referrals. Amen? Amen? To avoid being flagged by the law and to keep getting that money. That. Now, while all this is happening, a generation of children is getting left behind. They're getting left behind by a system that 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 gives them the upper hand when it comes to testing. And then when they get to 11th grade and it's almost time for them to graduate, they realize that they can't read a graphic novel. They realize that they can't balance a checkbook. They realize that they can't do any type of mathematics that would even remotely get them a chance of getting into a decent college. But they weren't left behind as far as the law is concerned. Now, 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 now churches, I tell you, since God doesn't have a no child left behind, I, I, I started to think about what if he did? What if he did have a No Child Left Behind program? Would it work? Suppose God said that this church is going to be rewarded or we're going to be punished uh, if the leaders and the members of the churches don't score well or score well as far as the Ten Commandments test is concerned. Uh-huh. Churches that score well, their leaders, like me, they're preachers, they're Sunday school teachers, they all gonna be highly favored. They're gonna get blessed. Churches that score low, they're gonna be replaced, or there's gonna be some corrective action taken. And the members would be given a choice. You either want to stay with this church, or you can get a voucher and go to another church. If your testing ain't working out. Amen? Amen. Every time the year starts. We began to teach, I would preach, I would lecture about the Ten Commandments. You'd hear so much about the Ten Commandments, you'd be sick of hearing the Ten Commandments. If my blessing was dependent on whether you 
new to Ten Commandments, well, I'm going to talk about the Ten Commandments. We ain't going to have Friends and Family Day. We're going to have Ten Commandment Day. So we ain't having no children's program. We're going to have Ten Ten to Win Day. Amen. We ain't going to have no 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 no, no church anniversary. We're going to say Ten it to Win it. Bring it and get it. Amen. We're going to be nothing but, but focus around the Ten Commandments because, see, my blessing is contingent on whether you know the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandment rally. Ten Commandment small group. Ten Commandment retreats. Ten Commandment on, women's now. ministry. Ten men. In a, it's ten men joined together. Ten youth to save our... We're going to be doing ten all over the place. And at the end of the year, the church is going to get some practice tests. I'm going to give you some practice tests on the Ten Commandments. Amen. And a lot of instructions about how to pass the big test. I'm going to tell you, when in doubt, just circle C. Y'all, 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 y'all know what I'm talking about? If you don't think you know the answer, just circle C. Amen. And when the results are reported, we're going to all celebrate. I'm going to praise God for your basic mastery of the Ten Commandments. But in the process, though, some of us, or a few of us, should have been learning how to pray. Some of us should have been learning how to serve. Some of us should have been learning how to worship. Amen? But because we had the big test, and we had to focus on the big ten, I didn't teach you any of that. I didn't talk about any of that. I didn't preach about any of that. Thank God that God doesn't measure us by some kind of standardized Hallelujah. test. Thank you, Amen. Because if he did, all of us would flunk. Trust me, if I walk through this congregation right now and told everybody, pulled everybody aside and tell them, tell me, recite to me the Ten Commandments. Amen. Amen. Oh, they start making up stuff. Amen. They start making up stuff. Thou shalt not drive over the speed limit. Uh, thou shalt not cuss. But what, 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 what? Start making up things. Amen. And all of us would flow. Listen, I don't know about you, but I get assurance from the word of God that he will never leave us alone. He will never leave us behind he will never forsake us. Amen? Amen? See, I don't care. You can struggle. You can fall short, young people. But I'm telling you, right now, in this place, you have a God that will never leave you. No matter what you've gone through at school. No matter what you've gone through in your Amen. family. That's Amen? Right. Amen? Listen, right. I don't have much time. That's all right. Though. But... Because uh, uh, y'all, you know, y'all want to praise and jump up and down and all that kind of stuff. Amen. Well, Used up all the time. I don't know why y'all do that all the time. Amen. Amen. The text here is a familiar text. And it's a time when Mary and Joseph lost their little 12 year old son, Jesus, in the crowd. Amen. Joseph and Mary and Jesus made that three or four day trip over to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. Amen. One of the biggest holidays uh, in the Jewish faith. Now, at the temple in the Jewish faith at that time there were separate areas for women and there were separate areas for men. Men didn't sit with the women and women didn't sit with the men. And normally if there's a child uh up until the age of 12, they would either sit, they, they would sit with the mothers. Amen? Amen? They would sit with the mothers. Once a man, young man reached 12 years old, he would move over and sit with the men right. in the men's section. Well, most scholars believe that they lost Jesus or Jesus wandered off to go his own way. And because he was 12, Mary thought he was sitting with Joseph. All right. And Joseph thought he was sitting with Mary. So they lost Jesus in the crowd. And they were in the caravan, which was quite large, their extended family, and they couldn't find him. Amen? Amen. So they went all the way back to Jerusalem. They left their caravan and went all the way back to Jerusalem, and they, they looked for Jesus. 
When they found him, he was in the temple. He was talking to the elders. And the elders were teaching him, but he was asking them questions that were amazing, amazing. them. Amen. All right. They went over to their son and they said, why did you do this to us? Amen. Amen. They had, he had scared them pretty good. Amen. Jesus answered his mom and said, don't you know, I had to be about my father's my father. business. All right. <laughs> See, the thing that I want you to focus on, though, is that Mary and Joseph stopped what they were doing. And immediately went back to find the child that had been left behind. So what's left behind? Today, I'm telling you, childhood is in danger. I read a story, a disturbing story the other day about a child, nine years old, just had a baby. Amen. Childhood is being left behind. Amen. Amen. There, there, there was ever a time when, 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 when parents, the parents, we need to exercise a little more vigil, uh, 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 vigilance, amen, in the nurture of our children and the care of our children. It's right now. See, see you can't afford to let your child get left behind. Amen. Listen, we'll give you a couple things that will teach you young people and parents how to not leave your children behind and, behind and young people, how to not get left behind. The first thing you need to understand, parents, is that children have to be trained to live. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of us have gotten to the point where we're so concerned about the bills. We've gotten ourselves in so much financial, uh, uh, so much of financial burden. Who's watching the kids? Well, if you're working, he's working, everybody's working, the child is coming home with the key around his neck. Who's watching the kid? I don't know about you, but my parents trusted me. But they shouldn't have. Not all the time. Amen. 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 There's nothing like an empty house on a schedule. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying today. Yeah. Ain't nothing like an empty house on a schedule. If I got the house and I know the schedule... Oh, man, right. something about to jump off in here, amen? amen. I'm going to pick up that phone. I'm either going to have my friends. We're going we're gonna to pump yeah. up the volume on the stereo. Yeah, we're going to get our oldest friend, our oldest looking friend, the one with the full beard. We're going to get him to go in the liquor store. You know what I'm talking about, Doug. And, 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 and we're going to do our thing because we know the schedule. Amen. Amen. And don't let your mama house have a bar. Mm. Don't let them have one of them little bars down in the basement. If I got the house and I know the schedule, something going to jump off around. Who is watching the kid? You have to train children to live. And see, living involves more than just math and English and science. It's more than just taking tests. Living involves instilling values and, and, and goals and and discipline and direction and a sense of self-worth. You know, somebody need to be there to slap that girl on the leg and say, close your legs. That's right. Ladies don't sit like that. That's right now. Somebody need to, to be there to shake that boy and tell him to sit up straight. That's right now. And pay attention. Amen. Amen. Somebody need to be there to teach children about discipline. Amen? Amen? How to do things, how to have a sense of work. It's not easy, I know. But it's something that you have to do. All right. See, today, a large percentage of our parents are sending their children off to school, expecting the school to raise them. They send them off to school, expecting the school to raise them. And that's not their job. They don't do it well. Amen? And then they're surprised to know, oh, my goodness, my child got in trouble. Well, what do you know? Amen? Wow. That's surprising. Amen? There was no discipline. Amen? See, you can't give a child discipline by giving them things. Y'all need to hear what I'm talking about today. It doesn't matter whether you buy them the best sneakers. It doesn't matter whether you buy them the latest games. That's not what they need. That's what they want. 
See, what they need is discipline from an authority figure. See, because if you don't demand it, they're not going to respect any authority figures. Hallelujah. You let them say anything to you, believe me, they're going to say more than that to their teacher. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying today. You let them get away with stuff and then still reward them. Listen, when I did something, I had a hard way to go. Number one, I, I would remember it. Amen. Because it wasn't no little thing. It wasn't no, uh, I'll get a little, little holler here and there. Amen. Amen. You might be grounded for two weeks. You might be grounded for a month. Only thing you could do was come in and hear your friends playing outside. Yes. Amen. Amen. They playing outside. Give me the ball. Throw the ball, man. Throw the ball. You sitting up there in your room. Yes. Yes. No TV. I had a little black and white TV. They take that away. 13 inch TV. Take oh, that. Man. You can't even... oh. All you could do was your homework, read, and your chores. That's right. Amen. Amen. I used to slow walk on the way home from school. Amen. Slow walk on the way home from school. This was my last little bit of freedom. Slow down, y'all. Slow down. This my last little bit of freedom. Amen. You got to do stuff to make them remember and understand the seriousness of their infraction. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 6 and 7, And thou shalt teach them commandments diligently unto thy children Amen. and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. Amen? Amen. Talk about them. Talk about their day. When they get up in the morning, talk about what they're supposed to do and what you expect from them. When they lie down at night, talk about how they the successes that they've had during the day. And also the places where they've fallen short and how you expect for them to get up in the morning with another attitude. Amen. Then children have to be trained to live with others. Amen. See, some of us have a hard time teaching that thing because we never learned it ourselves. Amen. 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 Children have to be trained to function with as social beings. Amen. 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 How to live with other people. You've got to teach your child to share. Listen, you either share or you don't play with nothing. Y'all right. don't hear what I'm saying today. You either going to share and be social or you don't have the fun you're all by yourself. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, you've got to teach your children that hitting is not a, a appropriate reaction when something doesn't go your way. Somebody ought to hear what I'm saying today. Talking and, and raising your voice to people that are in authority over you is not something that you want to do. Amen? amen. amen. Listen, you wouldn't you might raise your voice. Amen. When I was a child, you might raise your voice. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. Not me. You could, but I doubt if you'd get a whole sentence out. <laughs> I, I doubt if you'd get the whole sentence out. Amen. Amen. You might get some of it out, but I doubt if you'd get the sentence out. Amen. I have a hard time explaining to your boys why your lip is all swollen the next day. Come on, Amen. talk about it, brother. Talk about it now. Amen. Amen. Some of us have relegated the teaching of our children to the television set, to the PlayStation 3. Don't bother me. They're doing something wrong. They're doing something unacceptable. Don't bother me right now. Go watch TV. Go play this game. Go do that. What's being left behind? I'm telling you what's being left behind. The essentials of social living. Young people, you got to learn how to talk so that people can understand you. You got to learn how to talk. It's all right to use slang and all that kind of stuff. I used it when I was young. I still slip it in every now and then now. Amen. But you got to know how to transition from that stuff and be able to speak in a socially acceptable manner. You want to get a job one day. You want to be somebody one day. You got to learn how to talk something other than street jargon. See, and parents, listen, I don't care how they are. I don't care how old they are. That stuff is unacceptable in your house. Yes, 
Amen. Yo is not a word. Right. Amen. 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 Yo is not a word. That word is not found in the dictionary. So what's up, yo? That's not a sentence. Show sure enough, brother. Amen. What you doing, yo? That's not a sentence. Amen. amen. And that's amen. fine when you get with your friends or whatever y'all want to do that, amen. But you can't get that ingrained into your brain. To where as you go and sit down before uh, somebody in power and it just slip out. See, because that kind of stuff will slip out. Just like when you cussing all the time, it'll slip out every now and then. You trying to talk nice, amen, but it slip out. You forgot you was in church and it slip out, amen. You forgot you was talking to and your parents were around and it slip out. It slips out because you got it in you. And what's inside of you is going to come out, whether it's socially acceptable or not. Amen? Amen. It don't take a teacher but a few minutes to tell, on the first day of school, to tell which students have home training and which ones don't. Amen? Don't take them but a few minutes. But when he tell everybody to sit down and one of them still walking around, Amen. When he tell them to be quiet and one of them still talking, somebody's getting away with stuff at home and they think that it's sociably acceptable and that they should get away with it. Y'all don't want to hear me today. Y'all get quiet on me. I want somebody, I want to talk to somebody that's raised some kids. Amen. Not some of y'all that's trying to raise them, but some of y'all that raised some kids to at least give me an amen. See, School's going to reject that behavior. And they're going to reject it by suspending the child. Amen. Expelling the child. That's right. That's right. Parents, in turn, going to curse at the child. Right? Right. right. Who cursed in school. Right. Amen. And beat the child who hit somebody in school. In school. Mm -hmm. And ironically enforce everything that's unacceptable. See, learning to live with others, you got to do that. The Bible says in Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. If you train him up when he's young, when he get old, you ain't got to worry about it. If you never let him hang out there on the corner when he was young, he's not going to feel comfortable hanging out there when he get old. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying today. If you never let, if you never allow that kind of language in your house, believe me, he might sneak and do it here and there. She might sneak and talk that way when she get off with her friends to try to look cool. But believe me, she's not going to do it. Not going to slip up and do it at the wrong time. Because she know better. Then children, young people, you got to want to not be left behind. It doesn't matter what anybody tries to teach you. It doesn't matter what anybody tries to instill in you. You've got to make it up in your mind Amen. that I'm not going to be left behind. Amen. Society's not going to leave me behind. Amen. I might have grew up in the projects, but I'm not going to be left behind right, in the projects. Right. I might have grew up on the street, but but when I when I grow up, I'm gonna have my own little street called my driveway. Y'all hear what I'm saying? There you go. You gotta make it up in your mind that I'm not gonna be left behind, no matter what anybody else does. They might skip school, but I'm not gonna be left behind. They might not they might not score well or even study for their test, but I'm not gonna be left behind. Amen. Amen. When Mary and Joseph found Jesus. He was in the temple speaking to the scholars. All right. Amen. Amen. He'd been there for three days. He was not left behind. He was trying to get left behind. Y'all right. hear what I'm saying? Right. This shows us a 12-year-old who was thirsty for knowledge. Amen? Amen. Amen. Understanding he wanted. He wanted to learn from others who knew more than he did. Right. Amen. 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 Young know, people, you got to have the thirst in you to learn from folk that know more than you do. Right. Every day you learn something, just think about it. Uh, every year you get older, you feel a little bit that you learn something else. Right. 
Well, think about me. It's been about 50 years since I started out. And I learned something every day. And believe me, there's something that I could teach you. Amen. But the problem is I don't know what you need to know. Right. You got to ask me. If you ask me, I'll be glad to tell you. But I don't know what you need to know. I don't know what your parents have taught you, what they haven't taught you. Right. You got to ask me, and I will tell you. Right. Jesus asked questions of these very, very uh, learned men. Gamaliel was there, the great teacher of Paul and Saul. Haliel was there, one of the most revered liberal teachers with a large school of followers. Simeon, who succeeded him, was there. Nicodemus was there, and, and Nicodemus was so well thought of that the other teachers sent him by night to talk to Jesus and to ask him what was going on. See, when you get in the presence of great men, you need to ask questions. Amen. 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 He wanted to know why. He wanted to know how. And then he took their answers and he rolled them around in his head and he formed some conclusions of his own. You don't have to do exactly like I've done. The only thing I can, the best thing I can share with you is the mistakes that I've made. All right. All right. See, that's what taught me stuff. All right. All right now. Don't make the same mistakes that I've made. All of you young people should be striving to get ahead and not to be left behind. All right. All right. It means that at some point, you've got to say to yourself, it's time for me. Young people, listen to what I'm saying. At some point in your life, it's not about my boyfriend. It's not about my girlfriend. It's not about the kind of pants I've got on. It's not about the shoes I'm wearing. It's not about the coat that I have. It's not about the phone that I have. But on, at please. some point in your life, you've got to resolve in your mind, I've got to be about my father's business. All right. All right. All right. It's All right. time for me to stop doing silly things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a time when you can spend all of your waking time in front of the TV set on some video game or on some internet social site. That's all right. There was a time when we all all just wanted to do silly things. Sleep and laugh and giggle and act a fool. Uh, there was a time when we didn't want to read. And we selected classes that were easy. Amen? Amen. And we wanted to learn to listen to music and just chill out all the time. But young people, you got to mature. And you got to learn that while some of this stuff it's all right. It's just like cookies or donuts. In moderation, it's cool, but you start eating a whole box of them, uh -huh. Joe. You got a problem. Amen. See, too much of that stuff will leave you behind. And as you grow up, you've got to say like 1 Corinthians 13 and 11. Y'all give me a little bit of time. I'm almost wait, done. Wait when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. That's right. Young people, my brothers and my sisters, you got to remember that we can't leave our children behind. Amen. Because God never leaves us behind. Amen. See, the danger with leaving your children behind is that we tell them that they're insignificant. That they don't matter. See, you think that you're doing something good because you give your children all kind of freedom and buy them all kinds of stuff and let them just have their own way. But what you really tell them is that they don't matter. They're not significant. That they can do whatever they want to do and nobody's going to care. See, this is why every soldier learns to trust his unit. <coughs> because he knows that they're not going to leave him behind. All right. In the midst of the battle with the enemy, if they, they get hurt, they know that somebody's going to come back and pick them up and rescue them and give them some hope. All right. But just like a soldier, uh -huh. it's got to know that he matters to his unit. 
Every child's got to know that they're important. That what they say is important to you. Amen. That what they do is important to you. And that they won't be left behind. That they won't get lost in the shuffle. Uh -huh. See, that's what I know about my God. That every believer matters. Every child in here matters. Amen. You're not going to be discarded. You're not going to be passed over. You're not going to be shuffled to the back of the line. Amen. Just like there's something for old folk, there's going to be something for young folk. Just like there's something for middle-aged folk, there's going to be something for, for young people. Just like there's something for youth, there's going to be something here for children. You're not going to be left behind. God is not going to leave you alone. See, we can't leave our children behind because God needs you, young people. Amen. Amen. God needs you to change the world. Amen. The injustice that you see in the world. Amen. You've got to change it. Jesus charged the young disciples to go out into the world. Yes, make a difference under the power of the Holy Ghost. He challenged them to go into the world and teach and preach and baptize and to observe all things that he had taught. Yes, see, I can't leave you behind, young people. Because one believing young person can make a difference and change the whole world. All right. Today, young people, I want you to remember that while the school system might have left you behind, you might have lost some friends along the way uh -huh. when you started trying to serve Jesus. There might have been some family members that turned their back on you when yeah. you... Well, started serving the Lord. I wish somebody right. would help me. All right. All right. Joseph was a boy, a young boy, yes, and his brothers took and left him behind yes, in a pit. But he rose up Joe to up. be the prime minister of Egypt. Yes, Samuel was a baby, and his mama left him behind in the temple. Yes, but she didn't abandon him. She placed him in God's hands. All right. All right. As a child, he came before God and Learned the ways to give advice that affected all the kings and queens of the world. David was a shepherd boy who was left behind when his brothers went to war. They left him behind. Uh, but God didn't leave him behind. God helped him to slay a giant and establish the kingdom that changed all of the world. Down in Jerusalem, Mary left Jesus behind, but God took care of him, and he was never alone. Because he was never alone, he saw a world filled with hate and tried to bring some love. Because they never left, God never left him alone. He saw a world that was filled with defeat and gave a message of victory because he was never left alone. He saw a world that was filled with weakness and brought a message of strength because he was never left alone. He saw a world filled with darkness and challenged the world to walk in the marvelous light. Long before George Bush started talking about no child left behind, God decided that no child of God would be left behind if you call on him, young people, he will never leave you alone. If you pray to him right now, he will never leave you alone. If we fall down, he'll pick us up again. He will never leave us alone. No, never alone. He promised to never leave us alone. No, never alone. They arrested him. Tried him in an unjust court, yeah. but he still promised, I'm not going to leave my children alone. They placed the crown of thorns on his head, yeah. and the blood came streaming down. They whipped him all night long, yeah. but I can still hear him say, I'll never leave my no. children alone. They nailed him to an old rugged cross, yeah. but I can hear him cry out in the last moments, Lord, forgive him, for they know not what they've done. I'll never leave you. I'll never leave them alone. 
he died out on Calvary but early Sunday morning I can hear him say as he got up from the grave I'll never leave him I'll never leave my children alone no never alone he promised that he'll never leave you alone I know that you might be struggling down in your school but he'll never leave you alone I know you might be struggling trying to make it on your job but he'll never leave you alone I know you might be struggling in your relationships but I can hear Jesus say I'll never leave them I'll never leave them alone it's my child these are my babies these are my teenagers these are my young people I'll never leave them I'll never leave them alone aren't you glad you got a God that will never leave you alone ain't he alright I'll never leave you alone because God won't leave you alone I'll never forget about you because God never forgot about you I'll never leave you I'll never leave you alone Hallelujah I'll never leave you alone Unless you want to be left alone. If you want to be left behind, there's nothing I can do with you. But if you want to grow, if you want to be all that God made you to be, young people, I'm your man. Sent here by God to teach you. And you don't have to be ashamed. Hallelujah. I know you've done some things and you're doing some things right now. But guess what? I can tell you a story or two. If you just want to talk. Amen. If you just want to talk, I can help you. Because I've been where you are. But I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you alone. All you got to do is go back there on the table back there and pick up one of those cards and you call me. Hallelujah. And if there's something wrong, there's something going on with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These old folks, I might give them a couple days, amen, because they should know better. Amen. But you, you call me. Amen. Like the Supreme say. Hallelujah. If you need me, you call me, young people, no matter where you are, no matter how far. Just call my name. I'll be there in a hurry. On this you can depend and never worry. There ain't no mountain high enough. There ain't no valley low enough. There ain't no river wide enough that will keep me from getting to you. I won't leave you because God won't leave you. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, the doors of the church are open. I don't know if there's any young people here today that look like...